everyone. First off, let me say, I thought I was supposed to do this last week. And then I think I just completely forgot about it, spaced out on it. And I saw somebody tweeted at me today asking about it. And I'm like, oh crap, I didn't do it. So here is the belated Q&A video from last weekend coming at you now. All in your face from my place. Yeehaw. Thanks to all of you that continue to watch this channel, that follow this channel, that watch this channel, support it, do whatever you do. Thank you. Now let's see if we can get through this Q&A video. I don't think there were a ton of questions that I put in here. Eh, just way it went. Um, so keep asking them. You never know when they're going to get answered or it's going to be the one that causes me to go off on a big long diatribe. Let's kick off this Q&A. Adam Fornwalt asks, would WWE be better with a true championship contender ranking system like they have in a UFC? And his justification being is that sometimes it seems like it's kind of random. People are just thrown in there. There's not really a hierarchy. And, you know, unlike the bullshit top 10 list they did with SmackDown, there's something to it. I mean, at this point in time, it would be worth having a go at it, taking a shot at it, and seeing if it works. It would change the presentation a little bit. So I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world. If it didn't work, like most of the other crap they try doesn't work, then they tried it, they failed, and they moved on. So yeah, I, I wouldn't be, I don't know if it would work, but I don't see where it would hurt to try. Kieran Chase asks, why do you hate Jeff Jarrett so much? You know, every time, Karen, every time, I want to be like, this dude's okay. This dude's all right. He's not that bad. He's just young. And he had a decade plus of Cena being pounded down his throat. Cena's his guy. He was brainwashed. He learned the propaganda from very early age. And someday he'll outgrow it. Someday he'll learn from it. And then you ask me a diarrhea-laced question like this one. This is like asking me why do you think Jay Cutler sucks. Because he does and it's freaking obvious! Why do I hate J-E-double-F-J-A-double-R-E-double-T? Because he absolutely sucks! And I have years of documented evidence that I've provided before and surely will be given an opportunity to in the future. And WWE, telling you right now, don't do it. Swear to God, don't do it. The guy had to create two different wrestling promotions as vanity projects for his own ego. One, so that way he can make himself world champion multiple times. And the other one, so that way he can launch some goddamn pyramid scheme bullshit. Knowing eventually he's using it as a way to shill 8 by 10s of him and his horse face bitch of a wife. And then to top it all off, you know it was only a matter of time before if things would have kept going, he would have made himself the Global Force World Champion too. Because you know it's true, because you know it's true, because fuck Jeff Jarrett. There. I swear I'll start to be like Kieran's okay, you know, he's, he's a cool dude, people should watch his channel, and so maybe subscribe to him, try to help a young brother out. And that's how you repay me? That's how you show appreciation to me? I was doing these videos when you were discovering yourself in the shower for the first time, Kieran, God damn it! Hey, you're gonna ask me a question like that! Ridiculous. You have been cut off from questions for two weeks. And everybody go to his channel and shit on one of his videos and talk about how much Cena sucks. Because that'll get to him. That'll really get to him. And tell him his little brother has more charisma than he could ever imagine to have. Anyways, moving on. Who got me worked up on that one? Oh, shit. It's X. Thoughts on Bobby Roode's U.S. title win? 
lame and lackluster. Especially because of the whole crap they did with, you know who, the suspect one himself. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! So he wins the title just to immediately surrender it because there was no fucking point or purpose to it because of course there wasn't because of course there hasn't been for anything you've done with Ziggler for at least half a decade! And it just takes all the steam out of it and then Rude wins this tournament and it's lackluster and it's lame and now that he's up at the main roster they don't really know what to do with him as a babyface when frankly he's probably better portrayed as a heel villainous type of character. So not impressed. Not impressed. Absolutely not the fault of Bobby Roode. This to me is truly a situation of WWE can't do right. Michael Corbin. This is a weird question. Peppermint Patty. Lesbian or trans man? Now I want to point out to the defenders of a certain second generation wrestler that's part of the club that you love so much that's full of bullets. Probably shooting blanks mostly. Just saying, I did not ask the question. I am answering the question, and by answering the question, in no way, shape, or form makes me a homophobe. Fucking dumb, stupid, and ridiculous to even suggest that, but nonetheless, that is the reality of which we live in our world today. If I had to choose between the two, lesbian. Feels like a, a strong, butch lesbian. Now, confident in herself, athletic type, butch lesbian. Yeah, not guy with tits. I would definitely say butch lesbian. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Mm hmm Jeremy Matthews. i move on from that question very quickly, Michael. Damn you. Are you going to watch the Andre the Giant documentary? Well, Jeremy, yes. Yes, I am. Because unlike the Ric Flair for 30 for 30, I actually care about the Andre the Giant documentary. So, yes, I will be watching. Now, watch the flaming keyboard figures of fire. How dare you not care about the Ric Flair 30 for 30? Because for the most part, it's all shit I've heard out of him via shoot interviews and other documentary things over the years. Eh, been there, done that, you know? Andre the Giant, you don't get a lot of biopics and documentaries on him. I'd be more interested to see one being produced by outside of WWE sources. The Metal Smark. Asked, was Austin right to take his ball and go home? He had the leverage to. He had the power to. And I will say what he was pissed off about, the whole thing about doing the job to Lesnar in the randomly thrown together King of the Ring qualifier match where he felt like that was a match that should have been built up to for a time to a pay-per-view where he's absolutely right, by the way. Um... He was right about all that and still wrong to take his ball and go home. There are better ways to handle it. I get why he did it. Understand completely. Still not the best way to handle your business. And deep down inside, I'm sure he realizes, even with the excuses he's made for the over the years about it, talk about his attitude sucked and he was injured and broken down, da 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 da. I'm pretty sure he, he admits that. It was not the right thing to do. It was not the best decision to make. It was not the way to conduct himself as a professional. And it wasn't. Sutton something. What's your honest opinion of Johnny Gargano? Limited exposure to him. Don't watch NXT currently. Thank God. Um, so I usually only catch him on what? The NXT TakeOver shows. I don't see what the appeal is. I don't get what the big hype is. He seems to be able to get over organically as a massive baby face, but that is with those smart crowds at the bigger shows. So does that necessarily carry over or not? To me, he frankly looks like another glorified vanilla spot monkey. That's what he looks like to me. But again, exposure to him, very minimal. So watching him more, maybe I would have a different opinion on him. Probably not. But I'll be open-minded unlike a lot of others. A uh, Brian Knight. Who is the biggest mark in professional wrestling? Oh, my goodness. So many to choose from. Between the big wrestling companies in the world, the independent promotions. Mm, if I had to narrow it down to one. 
I would go with the guy that started his own wrestling company so he could make himself a multiple world champion. Fuck Jeff Jarrett! That's your biggest mark in wrestling. Fuck him. Lots of other contenders. Believe me, lots of other contenders. Luke Wynn Staley. Your favorite Disney animated film and your thoughts on the live action remakes. La Favorite Disney animated film. Doesn't it kind of have to be by default? The Lion King? Feels like it. Thoughts on live action remakes. What really aggravates me about it is all these people are all giggly tits about fucking Beyonce being fucking Nala. Who gives a shit about Nala? She's a second rate character in The Lion King. Who gives a shit? It's about Mufasa. It's about Scar. And it's about Simba. Those are the three bad boys that carry the primary narrative of the story. You've got Timon and Pumbaa and a little bit of Zazu. Who gives a shit about Nala? And the fact is, all these people are going all giggly tits about Beyonce when they've got James Earl Jones playing Mufasa. Like, in the grand scheme of things, Beyonce can eat shit and kick rocks. This is James Earl fucking Jones. With the versatility to be the voice of Darth Vader and then be Terrence Mann and feel the dreams and all the other great things he's done. Let's not even talk about coming to America and all the other great works James Earl Jones has had over the years, not to mention being the voice of Mufasa in the original Lion King movie. And yet people are excited about Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce. And they're probably going to change the whole crap to make it a fucking Beyonce showcase and ha ah, ha. Ah. Fuck that. Fuck her. Tired of her getting pounded down my throat all the time. Because the real truth is, if Beyonce was truly that talented, she would get more movie offers than she does. And you could say, well, maybe she chooses not to take them. Bullshit. She started doing movies for a reason. Stopped doing movies for a reason. Because she just wasn't that good as an actress. Period. Sorry, Bayhive, whatever the fuck you call yourselves. But it pisses me off. This is James Earl Jones. Freaking Mufasa himself. Live and in the flesh. And we're talking about this bitch. It figures. Fucked up priorities. That's what it is. I don't even know if that answered your question, but that's the answer you got. Ben RFC. Will Daniel Bryan wrestle at WrestleMania? The company needs to make a decision. Either shit or get off the pot. If he's going to, then dive in. If he's not, then stop teasing any and all crap between him and Shane McMahon. Because otherwise it is yet just another gigantic waste of everybody's time. A huge waste. It almost feels like the WWE might... Come off their high horse, might clear him, so that way he can wrestle just enough, so that way they can keep him and prevent him from going to work for ROH in New Japan where he would wrestle a little bit more. Because his contract expires, I believe, in like October, November of this year, so if they're going to do it, it is going to be soon. Um, I'm 50-50 at this point. 50-50. Andrew Harrington. Why do people want to see Finn Balor versus The Undertaker? I don't know because they're fucking stupid. That is a great damn question. The hell of all the people you want to see The Undertaker wrestle, you want to see him wrestle Finn frickin' Balor? Finn Balor? Finn Balor! Holy Christ! Finn Balor? That is one thing if you said Cena. It's one thing if you said AJ Styles, even. It's one thing if you said Braun Strowman. It's one thing if you said a rematch between him and Brock Lesnar. Or him and Roman Reigns. Or maybe you really got behind Bray Wyatt and Bray came to try and get his revenge. All of these are much more viable, legitimate options. Matt Hardy. All these guys are much more interesting in the scope of feuding with The Undertaker than a Finn Balor is. The hell is wrong with people? Oh my God. Like you look at Finn Balor. Again, I cannot understand for the life of me why so many people think this guy is so great and so awesome. The hell does he do? If you take away the body paint and or the entrance, what do you got? A twinkie looking underwear model in his mid-30s that does shit that hundreds of other guys around the world do. 
What is so special? The answer is nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And if your argument will be to bring up the Japan shit, ding dong, dumb dicks, this isn't Japan. Doesn't work like that. Holy. And I'm sure people are. People are dumb. Mid Carter J. Why is the Ruthless Aggression Era the only one without a bad WrestleMania? What, what do you have? Are you counting WrestleMania's 18 to 24? You know what? Yeah, I, I guess you're right. I don't know that 22 was outstanding. I mean, 20 was okay. 21 was solid. 23 was solid. 24 was solid. That's really weird how that works out, isn't it? I think you've got a combination of factors with the brand split. You have some new up-and-coming guys. Coming into the fold, the Cena's, the Batista's, the Orton's, the Edge's. You still had enough of the old familiar faces like the Takers, the HBK's, the Triple H's. And they were still kind of at the height of their careers, the peak of their powers still. You had more other big names. So there's a variety of factors that I think contribute to that, but you're absolutely right. I don't think there was a truly terrible WrestleMania during that time frame. And that's really weird. Because if you think about it, like most people label WrestleMania 2000 as kind of a stinker. Uh, there were a couple of stinkers during the Hogan era, the New Generation era. Well, certainly during the PG era, which has kind of become the reality era, which I still call the PG era. Um, that's weird. It's just a quirk. Interesting how that works. I think part of that is, too, again, talking about the superior depth of roster of talent, the first couple of years of that, you still had a lot of the guys from WCW and ECW that were in the fold. So that certainly helped, too. You had more talent to work with. You had better creative minds there for a period of time. All of those things kind of collaborate to make it be not so bad. Uh, WTF is a manix. That's a great question. Why do we keep watching wrestling when quality continues to decline? That's a great question. <clears throat> we're gluttons for punishment. Sometimes we enjoy complaining about it. I think the truth is is that it's hard to give up on something that you've devoted so much of your life to. Like the whole thing of people saying these retards, typically younger than me, with less time watching wrestling than me, that'll come in a video and say, oh, if you don't like it, then don't watch. You know, how about they just don't suck? How about they just don't suck? It can't be that hard to not suck. And they do. Just be better. I, I, like I said, it's not easy to just sit there and say, after all these years, just walk away. Not to mention, I do the channel too, so it's really not that easy to just give it up. So instead, instead of blaming the fans, the customers, how about we blame the companies and they just be better? We have that hope maybe that there will be a boom period, even though we continue to wait for the boom period that is not coming, um, and some of its habit. We have friends that we watch it with. You know, it's a family thing. A lot of different reasons. It's a great question, though. Very interesting question. Lord Hater asks, Any chances you'll do an old 15 Reasons Sucks video? Well, if more people would retweet the one I posted on Twitter about Randy Orton, you'd get 15 reasons. And perhaps we could do others about the Young Bucks and Finn Balor. You know, we got a whole bunch of them I could do. Starts with that Orton one, though. Y'all should have retweeted that on Twitter. It's still there. Go retweet it. Get to that number. Make it happen. And then who's next to get called out on their BS by you? I don't know. It'll happen, and I'm sure it'll happen sooner rather than later. Uh, I don't know who it will be yet, but it's coming. Monique Pryor. Sup, Monique. Sup. <laughs> Anyways, NBA Finals prediction. Celtics Warriors? I have to see it to believe it with a Mike D'Antoni tan coach team in the playoffs, especially if they can play enough defense in the Western Conference Finals against the Warriors. And then in the East, maybe LeBron with the younger players around him, that team will gel better and they'll mesh better. But I still like the Celtics. They're much, much better defensively, and they I feel like they have enough offensive weapons to go ahead and beat Cleveland in a series if it got to that point. And I don't really take Toronto that seriously. So right now I think it's Celtics-Warriors. Uh H20247, is Cody Rhodes the most underrated wrestler, and will he be back in WWE? 
Again, I was really surprised I didn't get more Cody Rhodes related questions. Really surprised. First of all, fuck Cody Rhodes. Fuck him. After years of, I believe, being very positive about Cody Rhodes and being a fan of his, for his getting butt hurt about one reply to a question that somebody asked me. Fuck him. So why wrestling isn't bigger, why wrestling isn't better, because too many of these guys are too goddamn insecure in the professional wrestling business, get all butt hurt in their pussies and their feelings, than to sit there and get better at their craft. Like, what the hell? And then to make up false shit and then continue to repeat said false allegation, when called on it, when challenging it, does the punk ass thing, because Cody Rhodes is a punk ass, he just said, doesn't block, he just mutes, so that way. So basically what he does, he hides behind his platform, mind you, and sits there and creates a one-sided narrative that a lot of idiots feed into. And then here I am, and many of you, in the land of reality and logic and reason. The fact is, everything I said was truthful. Everything I said was factual. Cody Rhodes is the liar. He was proven to be the liar. He is full of shit. And fuck him. So no, he's not fucking overrated. The truth is, Cody Rhodes has been a decent talent over the years. But never been like superstar type of guy. Could work a decent match, but not spectacular. Okay. Character, but not great. Some versatility. Not a ton. Um, okay as a face, not great. Okay as a heel, not great. Just, if you use the word to describe Cody Rhodes as a wrestler, he's okay. I'm not just going to totally shit on the guy just because he's a punk ass and a motherfucker and a coward and a liar. But I'm not going to sit there and pretend like he's great. And I'm most certainly... Most certainly, I'm not going to hold back from saying anything negative about him in the future. If he does something good, I'll talk about it good. If he does something bad, I'm going to bury his ass. Just like I did a couple weeks ago. And if you don't think I buried his ass, then you're a fucking moron too. Oh, he's in the bullet club. He can't do anything wrong. Bullshit. I can see why people like Kenny Omega. I can't see Kenny Omega getting caught up in this type of bullshit. I can't want to say the Young Bucks, because they're just bitches. They'll just block. But at least Kenny Omega, you know, he's actually worried about trying to be like the actual main event in New Japan and shit. Unlike Cody Rhodes. What the fuck? Just grow up, dude. Seriously. Unbelievable. And will he be back in WWE? Of course he fucking will. That's why he makes those political type of statements and backs off and backtracks off of shit he said a year, two years ago. He knows it will end up there, and that's fine. Again, I did not knock him for fucking being political, but clearly he was. Clearly. Again, clearly. And it's a smart thing to do. Anyways, enough about that fuck stick. Let's move on. Mike Rock Movie Reviews. Who sucks more, Corey Graves on commentary or Finn Balor without the entrance? The truth is, it's Corey Graves and it's not close, because Finn Balor without the body paint and without the entrance is just another jabroni, but he's just another jabroni that's only going to be on your TV 5, 10 to 15 minutes a week. Corey Graves is going to be on there for all three hours of Raw and what, two hours of freaking SmackDown and then on the damn pay-per-views as well? Like, who wants to listen to that wishy-washy back and forth fuck with his stupid looking face and his CM Punk wannabe ass? Corey Graves sucks far, far worse than Finn Balor ever could imagine to me. That's the truth. But anyways, that's it for this Q&A. Thanks to you guys that submitted your questions. If you don't follow OTR Central on Twitter, do so, damn it. And remember, OTR Central, more and more, is not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Subscribe, damn it, and buy a shirt.